México. Va a ser un showcase aquí en el Distrito Federal. Estoy hablando de, de Good Charlotte, que tiene nuevo material discográfico, Good Morning Revival. Así que pues vamos a empezar eh, saludándolos. First of all, thank you very much for your time at this interview. Thank you. Uh, Billy us. Joel, uh, Billy, uh, Dino. Dino, and Paul. Paul. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, so, uh, how can you describe the sound of, of this new album, Good Morning Revival? Uh, Good Morning Revival, it's kind of a new sound for us. Um, It's very good Charlotte though. It sounds, I mean, it feels like with this record we kind of uh, kind of have developed our own sound and our own style and um, it just, you know, it's a new new version of Good Charlotte. And, and I totally agree with that. I mean, the, the, the single, uh, Keep Your Hands Off My Girl, uh, not just for me, but for a lot of people that have told me the same, when we just first uh, heard the song, we were like, wow, that's Good Charlotte. It's, it's like a new sound. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, tell us a little bit, why did you decide to, to make that change? Uh, we just wanted to kind of, especially with Keep Your Hands Off My Girl, I think we just wanted to kind of experiment a little bit. And um, all of our songs usually have a very, like, a very strong message or something. And, and Keep Your Hands Off My Girl is more just about us trying things out and experimenting with music and doing kind of like what we want to do and you know it, it kind of was just more about having fun and making music for that song than like saying some kind of message because all of our songs really are about something you know usually something like a message of like hope or something for our fans and this song was more for us just to have fun and record and kind of experiment on every record we try to keep evolving and keep moving forward too you yeah. know we, we always try to do something fresh on every record uh And uh, and so th I think in this on this record that's one of the elements that's kind of new for us. Now I, I know that you work with uh, Don Gilmore, that is a great great producer. Um, in which way he challenged you in order to do this album? Well, the number one thing what first was the songs. So he wouldn't really accept any songs. Like we had written like 50 some songs and he wasn't happy with them, so we had to scrap those and start over. And he was just really hard on us with the songwriting. And then. With the music, you know, he just, he wouldn't just accept anything that we've done before. Like, he really wanted something different and new. And so he was really, like, honest with us and really pretty much straight up with us. Just like, if he didn't like something, it was just like, no, next, <laughs> you know. Cool. And now, uh, for uh, Billy, uh, I know that uh, you, uh, well, to, Before, before t uh, creating this album and after the touring uh, of the last album, you have a, a little bit of time off. Uh, how much helped that time off? Um, I think the time off was really beneficial, just for you know really normal things. Maybe not music things, but just the fact that we hadn't really got to live normal lives, spend time with our families, or just normal things. So. When we came back to this record, I think everyone was like refreshed and rejuvenated and kind of just not, not tired of touring and, and more like, you know, kind of like we were just starting over and, and like we were a new band, you know, starting over again. And that's kind of where the, the title of the record came from. Cool. And now, uh, Paul, I know that uh, after that time off, you went to Canada to, to do that album and you kind of isolated yourself for a couple of months. How hard is, is that process of not doing nothing, just focus on the album? You know, it, uh, it's not as hard as you would think. It's kind of easy once you get there. Just try, just try to zone things out and, um, you know, turn your phone off and just totally just forget about the world for a minute. It's just, it's a nice break from day-to-day uh, -day life, running around, seeing people, doing things, worrying about your house, your, your animals, you know, all those different things, just to get away and totally focus on creating art. And now, talking about uh, the history of you as a musician, I know, Dean, that b uh, before that you play for, uh, with Morrissey, that it's a great artist. What, what could it be the most important thing that you learn from him? Um, you know, uh, you learn from everyone you play with, you know, not, not just Morrissey. I learn from these guys every day, you know, too, everyone in, in this band. and uh, Not just know. about music. <laughs> <laughs> Benji's taught me a lot of really cool tricks. <laughs> They'll be on the blog. Anyway, so, um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, Morrissey, I don't know. I mean, um, it, that sty his style of music, playing that stuff, playing, playing the old Smith stuff, it, you know, it has a certain groove in it as for the drummer. And, you know, I just, got, I just learned how to settle into that, into what his vibe was. And, and, and I, I learned a lot. It took a lot from it. And, you know, it's just one more step in learning and just growing as a, as a player. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, yeah. And now, uh, Benji, I know that a really important person in your life and also to, to Joel is, is your mother. Uh, what could it be the most important thing that you admire of her? Uh, what do I admire about my mom? Um, as long as I can remember, she always made things uh, come, no matter what situation our family was in or whatever. She was always really still really loving, even as frustrated as she might have been. She was always uh, really loving, and she always made things happen. Somehow she always put a meal together, or somehow she always, you know, got the bills paid. Like, you know, she, was, she always made things kind of come together. And I kind of learned how to do that in my life, too, no matter what situation I'm in. I think I take a lot of that from my mom. And, and what could it be the most important thing that you think she teach you in the life? In my the mom life? always taught me, um, you know, she taught me to have faith, and she taught me, uh, you know, to be a good person. And um, you know, she was always, always uh, made things okay, you know. And just so I, I always try to be a positive person, you know. I think I got, I got that from my mom. And is there a thing that uh, your mom always tried to teach you, and you just no, no, no get it? Everything else. <laughs> <laughs> really? All my bad habits. <laughs> she, tried to, she tried to teach me not to have those habits, and I wanted to have them, I guess. So here they are. <laughs> now, uh, talking about the songs in, in the album, Billy, um, I know that uh, for the song The River, you have a collaboration with M. Shadow from Avenged Sevenfold, that it's a great band. Um, how do you meet them, or how you came with the idea of doing that? We've been friends with the guys in Avenged for a couple of years. <clears throat> and we always talk about getting a guest on the record um, and we were just hanging out one night and said you guys should come in the studio tomorrow and <laughs> you know I, we didn't really know if they'd show up or whatever but sure enough next day they showed up and we're like hey you know we're ready to do this and just kind of laid some guitars and some vocals down and you know we didn't really even think it would be the first single in America but the record label was really excited about it and it came out awesome I think we all love it Cool. And now, uh, Paul, I know that the next single is going to be Dan Florentham. Uh, oh, you know that, do you? Yeah, I did. <laughs> uh, Inside info. Yeah. <laughs> How can you describe the music of that song? Uh, that was the first song that, like, uh, I don't know, when I heard it for the first time, I was totally blown away. Like, oh, this should be the first single. This is the greatest thing ever. Uh, it's just totally a smack in the face if you're a good Charlotte fan and totally different kind of sound for us and like um i don't know the lyrics are really good in that song you know they're really socially aware and just uh i don't know i i i like the whole feel in that song it's just different than anything we've ever done before and uh we shot a really really cool video for it and we can't wait to push that out to the world Cool and 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 then talking about about the video, did you, did you get uh, did you get involved in the ideas uh, in the visual ideas on, on the video or not? Well, I created the whole thing. No, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I just sat back there and sweated with all these guys all day long, and we had a great time in uh, Canada in Toronto, yeah. and worked with this great director, and uh, I think it's one of the best videos I've ever seen. Everyone's gonna love it, man. Cool. <laughs> and, now, and now, Benji, I know, well, it's great that you like your own music and your own videos. I mean, it's really important. Benji, I know that it's a song called A Beautiful Place that, uh, you you, yeah, you wrote it yeah. here in Mexico. Can you tell us a little bit of the experience and the story of that song? Um, I was walking down the beach, and out of nowhere, I see a woman walking towards me. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No, uh, actually, uh, we we kept, we had come down uh, to do the MTV Awards, yeah. and we had a couple days. We actually had we got to hang out, which rarely happens. And um, whenever I travel, it really inspires me, and that's uh, it makes me it always makes me want to write. But I was just started reminiscing, and I was thinking, man, it'd be cool if I could bring my family here because my family doesn't get to travel that much, and. I had never seen anywhere so beautiful, and I was like, it would be so cool if they got to see this. And um, just sat down with my acoustic guitar and started writing, and um, that's when the magic happens, you know? It's, just, um, it's hot. <laughs> no, it's cool. Cool. <laughs> But uh, yeah, it just came in, and it was, you know, it turned out to be a decent song and made the record. Cool. And now, uh, Joel, uh, is that true that you're a big Tupac Shakur fan? Love Tupac. What is the most I important? I love Tupac's new record. No, dude, come on. Every <laughs> Everybody knows that he's there. That's actually a quote off of one of his records, um, To Live and Die in L.A., you know, that skit before the song. Yeah. I love Tupac's new record. Um, I love Tupac. Tupac's, to me, is one of the most inspiring artists of our time. You know, he's a poet. He was a revolutionary. He was an icon. He was an yeah. icon. And um, 
Uh, there just aren't many artists out there that are as great as Tupac was. But, you know, we really realized it after he was gone, I think, how great he was. You know, I mean, when he was here, um, you know, he did a lot of great things. But, you know, he's just, he was a revolutionary. He was, he was actually speaking to a generation uh, about some real issues in America, you know, the way that, uh, especially uh, uh, African Americans, the way that they, you know, have been portrayed and been treated in our country. You know, Tupac was just a revolutionary, and uh, I really admire, like, someone like that. And his poetry was great, and his songs were great, and uh, I'm just a big fan of Tupac. Cool. I mean, I'd never be a rapper, but, you know, I just I appreciate him for his words and his, you know, his, his ideas. Cool. Uh, do you like Notorious B.I.G.? I like Biggie. <laughs> well, and, and now, uh, at, at the beginning, or at some point of your career, a lot of people try to link you with, with punk music. Do you consider yourself, your, your music at some point as a punk? No, I think that we finally kind of separated ourselves yeah. from that, that genre. Um, and it's not something that we wanted to do. I think it's something that's happened naturally because we come from that world. You know, we, we did the Warped Tour a million times. We did yeah. all the tours. We love... I mean, all the bands we tour with are generally like pop punk or yeah. emo or something like that. And um, so we've definitely, I think we've, I think we've kind of left our imprint on the genre a little bit. But I think that you can only grow so much in that in that world before you kind of outgrow it musically. And if you want to start exploring new ideas and new sounds, you have to continue to grow outside of that. But um, you know, it's where we're from. It's our roots, and I think that we. We'll always be. We'll, we'll, we'll always kind of have a, a hand in there. We'll always kind of be involved in that world because that's where we come from. And yeah. a lot of our fans love all those bands that are in that that we get kind of grouped in with in that genre. And um, you know, it's 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 not a bad thing. Like we don't look at it as a bad thing, but it's just something that we've kind of progressed out of. I think. You know, we could always go back. You know, we could always make a, a pop punk record again. And next album, here it comes. Yeah. But yeah. It's just so easy to make pop punk music. Like The Young and the Hopeless, if we went back, we could rewrite that record five times over and be bored with it because it's like, you know, four chords, each song. No, well, and, and now uh, talking, talking uh, also about, yeah, with, with this album, I mean, you try to make like a statement like, we're not doing the same songs. I mean, if you want to listen uh, to this album, you're going to listen a new sound of Good Charlotte, yeah. right? And that's yeah, important. And, you know, it's not like all one song. Each song is completely different. You know, Keep Your Hands Off My Girls, it's not really a complete representation for the album. You know, it's just a taste. Every song, on it, it's like a journey through different kinds of sounds. Musical and, feast. Yeah. Now, uh, during the time of Chronicle of Life and Death, um, some of you will uh, you to start like being mainstream like in in a paparazzi way did you did you bother that thing i planned it no come on no, i'm just kidding <laughs> but it's not like it's not every time we go out we call them and tell them where we are so that they'll come take pictures but it wasn't yeah. hard at that time to deal with that it's weird you know it's like um It's it's not reality. So yeah, of course. When you're just walking out down the street to get a cup of coffee or to do whatever, and you know people, you know it's just weird. But you learn to ignore it. So it, it's what it, it is. It's whatever, you know. I mean, that's not our reality. So we kind of uh, just ignore it. Cool. Yeah. And and I think that's the best way to try to walk in that line. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know. Yeah, I mean, if all those people fell in a big hole and went to Come hell and burned it for an eternity, nice. I, I wouldn't care. Yeah. But, you know, that's never going to happen. W <laughs> so. What do you think about this new indie revolution? Like, there is a lot of new bands, like, in this indie kind oh, of way. It's the best. I, like, indie rock and roll, like, all these 